guys, it's Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina, and today we'll be taking a, a deeper look at the Elements Retrievus HD1 dual band radio. And uh, this radio has turned out to be quite fun to play with. I've never had a DMR or digital mode radio, so there has been a bit of a learning curve, I will admit, but uh, I've gotten through most of the bigger hurdles, and I'm really happy to say that I'm really impressed with some of the functions this has. Now, some of this video will take place uh, with the camera located looking at the screen of my computer because most of the programming and most of the functions are more easily explained by uh, showing you the software that is available for this and you can see I actually have the the cable hooked up to my computer right now and so while you can do a lot of the programming through the keypad here I found it much easier just to go ahead and, and hook it up to the computer and and read and write through there but uh, let me go through some of the functions with you I think we've talked about some of this before but just as a refresher up here you have your on off and, and uh, volume control and uh, then up here is you know a way to change channels but you can also change channels from here and then you also have the ability to go and change uh, from channel mode into direct frequency mode and I think that's one of the uh, oh, I, yeah here we go into frequency mode and I think that's one of the first things I really like about this radio a lot of digital radios are more geared towards uh, security and private company operations and rightfully so you can encrypt and, and have tone control where you're only talking to certain groups and that's really nice but as a result for like the hobbyist the ham operator well there's not a whole lot that's uh, easy to use but not retrievous this HD1 is actually has tone the controls right here now I can change manually to go to whatever frequency I want to go to or using the keypad you can just there you go you can punch it in there and be right in there so both manual control to get right to a channel you want or up and down control and uh, and then of course you can also use your up down arrows here to do the same so I really like that function on this and uh, and I don't know it's just cool I haven't seen that before on many radios uh, that are digital anyway now we have below that your date and time which is nice we've got that set and that helps you keep an idea of what's going on in life so let's go into the menu and I want to show you some of the functions it has and again a lot of this stuff we're going to cover more in depth when we get over the computer but let's take a look so under main set, well, we have all, all the functions you would have in a normal radio. Squelch, um, you have um, time that you can set, whether you want a Roger beep or not. Adding and deleting channels, we won't, we won't be playing with that on the radio. I'll show you. It's so much easier just to go ahead and do it through the software on the computer. Scan mode, which is nice. You can go in there and scan. Channel mode, if you want to go from channel to frequency, that's, that's how you get through there. And also, that changes between DMR and analog mode. So if you want to scan... But you want to scan DMR only channels, you can do that. You can go in through and just do UHF or FM. Um, you can lock out the keypad, so if uh, you know your security guard or whatever, and you've got this thing hanging off your belt, you don't actually push buttons. So that's kind of nice. You get your beep for when you push a button. That's also something you can turn on and off. Changing your backlit timer. Um, you can redefine keys if you want to. I haven't really gotten into that, but it's possible to do so. Then setting channels, hang up, box delay if you want to have uh, vo you know voice control, and uh, and that's that for that main menu. Let's get back out of that. It, you have the ability to monitor. Let me go back to here. You have the ability to monitor two different channels here. So this one here and then right here where I have the date, you can either have that as 2 meter or 70 centimeter. You can have both 70, both 2 meter. It doesn't matter. So that's kind of a function. I've never seen that before on one of these radios, but it, it's kind of cool that it has. Um, if you're working security or if you're working out of business and... Uh, you had two different groups and you want to be able to contact between the two having those two channels in there would be nice to do so um, version right now I'm running uh, from April 420 um, that's 1.4.4 I think as of right now which is mid-July it's 1.4.6 or 7 I haven't felt the need to update the firmware but it's very easy to update same same method you use this cable that comes with it so that's nice then you have encryption mode, and uh, again, this is more for business use, although I guess if you were using a private group, you'd use it as well. Tons of different levels of encryption, tons of different uh, key codes that you can enter in there. Very complex. Uh, obviously, I don't really have a need for that right now, but it's available. So if you're thinking about this radio for business use, it's definitely there. GPS mode, that's kind of nice to have, although I am having some difficulty getting it to work properly. It may be that I need to update my firmware. I'm not sure. Um, 
uh, radio and radio ID. I won't go into ID because I don't want to give that away, but this is cool. You've got FM. Oh, let me turn this down a little bit. It also comes with an FM analog tuner, um, so you can have channels in there. And again, when I get into the software, you can actually enter your channels in and, and have them as presets like you would on a car stereo. But again, if you're working security, if you're working on a job site and you want to have a little portable radio, well, here it is. It's a really cool idea. I'm not sure why no one else ever really put this idea in, into, into use, but uh, I like it. Um, there's not a lot of local stations in my area. Yeah, so I, I don't even remember what, I don't really listen to FM radio myself, uh, I'm more of an AM radio kind of guy, but, so if there's stations out there that are active, it'll play, uh, I'm trying to think if there are any stations, so there are some out there, I just, and then you can see, look, an eggs out of here. And you hear it still playing. So you can have that and still have the functions of the radio. So it doesn't really interfere. It's not like it's blocking out the ham radio aspects of it or the two meter business band stuff. So uh, just to do that, you hit the menu button again, back out, and now the radio's off. So that's, that's kind of neat. Contacts is where this thing really shines. And again, I'm not going to get into it on this small screen because I'm sure it's pretty hard to see. But when I go onto the big computer, you are going to be blown away by what DMR radio has done for contact lists and call logs. Pretty much, if you're an operator on DMR and you've entered in your information into the database, which is easily downloadable, you will end up with, uh, I've got 40 plus thousand entries in here. So just about every ham operator that's on DMR in the United States that has chosen to, I've got their call signs. It lets me know what state they're calling from, what area, their name, all that stuff. A little scary, but also kind of cool. Messaging system, it is exactly what it sounds like. This thing has the ability through digital mode to text. You can write, you have an inbox, so like emails, but you can write and send messages. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy. And you can send them to, so like you get yourself a ham radio operator's uh, ID and you send them a message right through the radio. It's, it's incredible technology. And then we go back into band. So let me back out of that. Let's go over to, uh, let's go over to the computer now. I'm going to set the camera up facing the computer and I'll go through the software that you can download. And that's where... I think uh, most of the information you're going to get out of this video is coming from. Okay, so here we have the screen, and this software that comes, uh, you get it right from the website for the HD1. Make sure you download it for the HD1 because they do offer other radios on that site. But the only uh, nitpick I have here is that because the software is so new, I use Norton Antivirus for my computer, and it recognized it as uh, possibly being a virus or an unknown, you know, entity because there's so few copies of it floating around right now. It wasn't a big deal. I disabled the antivirus for 15 minutes, installed the software. To put anyone's mind at ease, I did go ahead and run an antivirus check on it, and it checks out just fine. But what we end up with is this program here. And along the side here, here's our HD1 icon. We have a bunch of settings here, and I'll go through some of these. Not all of them are, are really usable right now, but basic settings. You know, This is going to tell you um, serial number, ID, that kind of stuff, firmware ID. So that's a good way you can take this and then go to the website and be like, oh, gosh, they've, they've got a much newer version, so you can update your firmware if you choose to. Um, regular settings, a lot again, a lot of the stuff that's controllable on the radio itself is also available here. Here's our squelch setting, uh, frequency times, I mean, battery saver mode, uh, language, which is good. So it talks to you in English. If you accidentally mess with that and get the uh, stuff set up in a different language, there's a great way to go in here and change it. Um, backlight how many how many seconds it holds I can hold it I want to hold it for much longer in case we go back to it so uh, you can even have this thing password protected again if this was going to be used for business that's a really neat function so let's say one of the guards drops his his uh, radio and now somebody else finds it they turn it on it's useless at least for them so uh, Roger beep tones I mean the work so all the stuff that we were just looking at on there that you can go through is also available here um, and then let's go to channels, and this is where I've, I've already have channels programmed into this thing. And as you can see, you have the options to do quite a few things here. You have the option, of course, to just have your regular channels, but you can do 2 meter or 440, or, or I'm sorry, a business band 70 centimeter. Uh, but you also have analog or digital choices, and then you have other options in here as well. Do you want your power to go high or low? Do you want it to uh, add it to the scan as I scan through my channels? You know, yes or no. Bandwidth switches here. 
and there's more options far down down but uh, I have uh, I have some that I've written in here and you can see I'll get back up these are the repeaters in the area that I've added uh, you know on two analogs and a digital so we have a two meter and two seventy centimeter ones and uh, offsets and stuff like that so that's that I really like that part uh, zone information is again more business use really so I won't really get into that but the radio itself um, here's what I'm talking about here's the FM portion of the radio so you know let's say 101.5 was the station um, I just enter that in and now that becomes channel number one you know and I just enter in another one let's say 96.5 or something like that right well now that becomes a station so now if I go into radio mode while I'm out on a job site and I want to scroll through the channels that I like it's it's all set up in there so that's really kinda cool and there's a bunch of locations so I don't know if you were in a big city you'd have over 32 presets that's that's pretty impressive so uh, that's radio mode that's cool I don't think I've ever heard of another ham radio that had that function and I really like that but this is this is this is the moment this is the thing this is just crazy contacts um, I'm gonna go to address book contacts and it'll take it a second to load because of how many there are but you guys are gonna just be blown away by the list here and I've got to import the list it doesn't download back from your um, let me just go ahead and, uh, and get that. There we go. Give it a second. Now these lists are available online. Just make sure to enter in the uh, you know the proper uh, model number for your radio, the HD1 in this case, and obviously you will have a proper list. And now look at this. So you know call signs, names, location. There's a city. There's the state, United States, and there's the caller ID. And I'll go all the way to the end. 1,531 pages or 45,910 currently. And I'll bet you since I got this a month ago, there's probably more. Los Angeles, California, New York, and it just keeps going. So anybody in the United States that's using DMR right now can buy, send and receive texts or those email messages digitally. Or when they are heard on a repeater, let's say you make a long-distance contact on a repeater, which does happen. It's kind of rare. Uh, these days, even even back in analog days, it was kind of rare. But you can get people from all the way across country who are hopping through repeaters. And if that's the case, when they come through, well, let's say it's Daniel here. Oh, there's his call sign. It'll come up with Daniel. He's calling from San Diego, California. And th isn't that just incredible? That is incredible technology. Now, the HD1 is capable of holding 100,000 contacts. Worldwide, there's only about 103,000 in, in the database, any database that I've seen. So you're talking about almost every operator on DMR right now in the world can fit onto this radio, which is just, oh, <laughs> it's the future. That's what it is. Uh, that is really neat. And then we have RX group list. So again, if you want to uh, have groups, uh, and I'll open this up. This is blank here because obviously I don't do this. But if you're a business uses, that's going to be important. Your DMR service Again, you can mess with your encryption and set that stuff up here. The encryption, I can enter my keys, invalid. And that way, that if I've got several groups on a job site and I want them to be on separate channels or separate levels of security, which happens in large buildings sometimes or large properties, uh, this is the way to do it. So you can all have the same radio, you can all have the same groups, but only certain groups with the right level of encryption will be able to hear certain conversations. So incredibly advanced, incredibly uh, high end this is this is really what it comes down to the Alloyance Retrievus HD1 dual band 2 meter and uh, 70 centimeter ham radio is just top of the line so uh, that's it uh, I wanted to go through this I wanted to show this off again I'm you know I don't want to make it too long-winded there are other videos that dive into each one of these particular things a little deeper and uh, and I recommend you doing more research on it but overall, I'm extremely pleased with it. I will say, if I had to ding it for anything, that it has been a bit of a learning curve for an old-timer like myself who's used to using just analog ham radios, um, old-school stuff. You know, the, the radio I have right now, uh, as far as 2-meter, was a Radio Shack. Uh, I think it's HTX 252, which is like, a you know, just old-school. So uh, moving from that to a DMR uh, with all these functions and, and so much flash uh, took a little bit of getting used to. But I'll tell you what. You know, I bet you by uh, you know by the time fall rolls around, I'll be a master at this thing, and I'll really get some great use out of it. Now I've got that directional antenna. I'm going to be setting up very shortly. I'm going to aim that towards the nearest repeater, but the nearest repeater also happens to be very close to center of uh, the center of town. And in my third video, which will come out probably in the next two months or so, I will take this uh, Retrievus and I'll take it to town, and we'll do some range tests. 
Because my other radio is analog only, we'll have to go analog to analog, but still, it'd be kind of interesting to see uh, just how far, especially in here in this mountainous terrain, these little radios can talk. So that's it. I'm Eric, owner of Firepoint Farms, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please think about liking and subscribing. And if you're interested in the HD1 or want to learn more, the links to this wonderful company who was kind enough to send me one of these to test is down in the description below. Take care. Something that needs a little fixing on fire.